So let me just show you. Open. I'm going to open the design so you can see just what it was. There are 6,930 parts. 6,930, right? I've not reached 10,000 parts. Cost 48,508. <laughs> My god, it's full of boosters. <laughs> I was thinking that, yeah, you know, I could probably start fitting some extra boosters in here, right? If, if I flip it 180 degrees, I can just use it to fly curb into the moon. <laughs> so I had a nice recording of this whole ascent to show you, unfortunately, it managed to actually break the recording and the first frames didn't show up until about a, a few thousand meters, uh, by which point the game had been running for over an hour. Yes, 7,000 parts does not do uh, many, many favours to the CPU in the system, which just really likes to fall over, crash and burn, and say, I, I want less struts and less boosters, please. I know what the Kerbals want, but I want less boosters. Now, it's also worth noting that during some of the staging events, there were explosions, and I mean unintended explosions, because obviously a rocket is just a series of explosions pushing the rocket forward in a nominal style. Thankfully, these explosions all turn out to be bits of discarded staging hitting the many, many rocket thrusters that are attached to these things. These three outer layers used pairs of boosters attached together to create a, well, uh, eight, eight little rocket chambers put together. So as uh, time went on, of course, things got faster, performance got better, and eventually we end up getting very close to where we want to be, or at least where we want to go. We want to go to the point of the moon that is nearest us because that is the shortest distance. Remember, if we want to go to the edge, that would mean traveling a little further because the surface is curved. Anyway, this is where the live stream actually started. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna, I've, I've changed settings. Ah, uh, you know what? I cannot, uh, yeah, I can't initialize Bandicam at the same time as I'm recording this. So, I, I guess we're just gonna go without Bandicam for this recording because this is gonna be it. So, oh, the game crashed! The game crashed! <laughs> Wait a second. This is where we are, and then I gotta go out to the tracking station. Uh, record breaker rebuild. Oh, mission elapsed. Not very long. Okay, so I've gotta turn this thing around here. And this is gonna take some effort, because I have a lot of force. So you can see I'm moving just under... Well, I, I boosted up to 8.2, but... Um, Wow, the engines are still very hot there. Look at that, looks like a real rocket. Notice how I'm overlapping my uh, booster clusters here so I can put eight boosters on there. Oh yeah, doesn't that look awesome? I think that looks pretty awesome. Okay, now while this is rotating, we need to transfer um, Valentina into the command seat. So we're going to open and then she's going to EVA. And she's going to crawl down into the rather more cramped uh, pod here. Board that. <laughs> Attaching, in the biblical sense, to any phrase automatically makes it scandalous. I like it. <laughs> that is... Thy Lord Root, who clearly has done a lot of reading of the Bible. Uh, which is, you know, totally acceptable. I'm just going to put both headphones on because this ear is kind of itchy. Okay, uh, once again. So just saying politically. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. That would work for fortune cookies too, would you? 
Those uncontrolled explosions were planned to reduce mass. Unfortunately, I required them to increase thrust. I, I'm, I'm sorry, by the way, I have got the next version of the nuclear bomb video mostly written now. Uh, so yeah, just keep an eye out for that, but I haven't had a chance to record it, so yeah. I like attaching, uh, no pun intended, to arbitrary sentences. You should do that, yeah, you just attach no pun intended, and then if people are like, I don't get the pun, you're like, oh, well, I'm sorry you're not well enough educated. <laughs> There, that, yeah, attaching no pun intended to phrases is a, a way of basically, you know, making people feel dumb, right? This is reminding me of XKCD, except in bed. What? Uh, yeah. So Whiskey Weasel is pointing out the Kerbal Space Program doesn't do Lagrange points unless... You use the Principia mod, which, in which case it does. That's right. You just have to say, except in the, in the biblical sense, no pun intended, and then you just cause all sorts of confusion. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Wait, somebody said they recently read through all the XKCD. Even the episode that actually unfolded over several months. <laughs> okay. And... Stage! Get those engines burning. Burning, burning, burning. Get those engines burning. Get those engines thrust in. Rawhide! Oh. Light them up, set them off! <laughs> uh, I, I get a. Somebody's, yeah, somebody was right mentioned rawhide, and I'm like. That, oh shit, I totally. Ooh, ooh, pardon me. I totally forgot that. Okay, I may have just doomed that by missing that one staging event. But maybe not. Maybe we'll get there. Yeah, Ring of Fire. That is another fantastic tune. I went down, down, down. <laughs> the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire. And it burns, burns, burns. The Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire. Light them up, set them off, burn them out, decouple, space hide. I, I know if that works. Oh, man. His version of Ghost Riders is best. I don't know. Ghost Riders? What are you talking about? There's not enough moon kerbals for me to care about them. Don't worry. They'll be fine. Okay, good news is Suicide Burn... Still showing positive. But I think, I, as I said, I may have, have delayed detaching too long, so could have, could have doomed this, but we'll find out. Again, this is uh, an effort to save a little bit of time here. I don't care about moon caribals. Moon Kerbals? What Moon Kerbals? I don't know any Moon Kerbals. Yeah, people should always have time to watch the Blues Brothers. Let's be clear. Okay, we're still doing fine in terms of Suicide Burn. <clears throat> One kilometer per second. Descending fast. What's my... Th I don't know what thrust to weight is, but we're just over 1G, so we're doing fine here. St 
save. <laughs> I'm just gonna save this, because I think I can do it. Oh, wow! I th I, it paused and I thought it had burned out, but I guess I missed that for just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna let this... just settle for a second, let it get down to three, and thrust again! Because what typically happens is I get down and it re- Oh! <laughs> yes, that stuff. You guys again. Ah uh, yeah, you see, you see how the suicide burn distance reset? Okay, so I'm gonna let this get down. Okay, touch and throttle up to space again. And target, set as target. Don't switch to it, set as target. And then we gotta go over this way quite a bit. I'm gonna do that. Okay, once again, we're heading home. So I don't know, did anybody keep keep track of what time? I don't know what time that was. Oh yeah, and I gotta fix the staging here. You know what I could do, actually? No, I'm gonna stay I'm gonna save that. I was thinking I could burn these things extra early, but I'm not gonna do that. What I am gonna do is that and that. You feel it was about the same? You believe it was 33 in the last run? Really? We'll find out, basically. I know, we need more thrust to weight ratio on the way back. What I was wondering, what was the original time? Am I slower this time? Because that's really gonna, you know, make it happen, whether whether this happens or not. Okay, five, seven, six, five, four. Oh crap! Didn't ditch that. Okay, and meanwhile, this is heading, heading downwards. You called it thirty-three minutes, but I don't remember when. Ah, uh, that's a good question. It's going to take... I've got nine minutes worth of thrust on this thing. I should get a cell phone mic. I do have... I have exactly that kind of mic right here. See? Lav mic. That's what I use for my... Uh, when I do my, like, outdoor broadcasts. I will use the lav mics because they're great. Like, if you look at my visit to JPL, that was all recorded on this mic. And I'm going to say, don't go for the cheapest ones, because I get a slightly better one, and it is, like, way less trouble. It was, like, a $40 version as opposed to a $20 version. So the problem, I thought about burning these engines early, but I would need to, like, pump the fuel into it, and that would be complicated. Uh, so I think I'm not going to bother with that. I should have piped, figured out how to pipe that up, but I'm not going to do it. The run is unoptimized because of a failure to stage on cue. That's not true. I, I staged on cue on descent. I was worried that I was going to crash because I failed to stage on cue. So I think we're doing fine in terms of staging here. I'm just going to say, imagine this was your daily commute to work. Yeah, I too would love to get to work by being crushed by 120 Gs of force. Yeah, so I got that staging just right. We had some issue last time. Okay, so now I'm going to aim at this target. 
Burn, baby, burn. Uh, we should send Scott to Games Done Quick this summer. I think I would have to have a shtick. Okay, we're just basically aiming at the dove. The dove from above. Great, we got that staging on time. I almost forgot it, but I got it just right. Uh, 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 ready to stage and stage. Yes. Nice. Okay. Six. We're about to ditch the stage and then we'll have a w about one minute 40 weight of fuel we had left. So it might be that I use less fuel to land. The other thing, right? Any minutes now. Okay. I think we might come back just a little bit faster this time. Okay. That's, we're coming back just a touch faster. One important difference between the previous speedrun I did to the moon is that uh, now I have a chance of burning up, which means that I uh, have to slow down a bit. So uh, at the last minute I do like another uh, 1800 meters per second deceleration to slow me down just a touch to make things safe. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6... Because I'm again coming in at an angle here. I wonder if I'll hit land this time. Burnout! Uh, slightly earlier than I did it this time. Okay... So we're below one hour, so I am about 20 seconds early this time, by the way. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to try to hold this attitude, because what's going to happen is I think I slip sideways a little. Maybe, maybe I should actually do that. Oh, crap. Trying to get, trying to keep this thing edge on so it moves faster. Okay, let's get this. I don't want to open it just yet. I just want to keep it pinned. And I'm watching my altitude up here. 133. Maybe I can... So maybe I can knock some seconds off this. I'm definitely knocking some seconds off. Okay, one kilometer up. Open. And... Deploy, and jettison. Hey, 106! 106! Oh, look at that. She's standing up like a pro. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> the peak G-force was lower. I'm really curious. Yeah, it is true. I guess I came in at a slightly less, slightly shallower angle. Oh, man, I was, I, I could have probably got a little faster. You think, I think sub one hour is definitely possible. We've just knocked, what, like 40 seconds off of that time, 50 seconds. I think this is so close to being possible, but I think also we have to, to leave this. And if you want to buy the t-shirt, make sure you check out the t-shirt link that I posted earlier. Because the t-shirt is only going to be available for... About 24 hours, 48 hours. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that is not what was supposed to happen. Spill that, that's empty. Whoa! <laughs> Let's see if it... <laughs> This is... <laughs> so I'm hoping I can get down to 54 seconds. So let's do this. It's all about getting to altitude quickly. Come on. Stage. Uh oh. Wait a second and fire. Ah. 
Ah, uh, 76, there we go. Oh, did anyone see that number? Man, that was so close.